Hi and welcome. I'm Julianne Cost, and in the next few minutes, we're going to learn how to make collections of images without moving the images on the hard drive and without making duplicates of the images, which would waste a lot of space on the hard drive and also make the management of those duplicated images difficult. So we're going to start with Quick Collection, which is a great way to create a temporary collection. I'm in the Arctic folder, and let's go ahead and select a few of these images, and then we can drag and drop them into the Quick Collection. We see that four images have been added to the Quick Collection, and when we click on the collection, we can see those images. Now Lightroom Classic has just made a virtual pointer to the original files. It did not duplicate them on hard drive, and it didn't move them from their original folder. All right, let's return to the Arctic folder. Now another way we can add a photo to Quick Collection is by selecting the image and then clicking on the small dot in the upper right of the thumbnail. Or we can tap the B key. Now before I tap the B key, we can see that that is the shortcut to add to Quick Collection. But it's also the shortcut key to add to the Target Collection, which we'll get to in just a minute. So I'll tap B, select another image, and tap B again, and I can select more than one image and tap B to add them both to Quick Collection. When we look at our collection, if I want to remove an image from Quick Collection, I can select it and then just tap the Delete key. It simply removes the photograph from the collection. The file is still on the hard drive in the exact same location, and if I return to the Arctic folder, we can see that image of the bird is still there. Now, for more permanent collections, we can use the Collections panel. I'll start by creating a collection set. Now, a collection set is just a folder that we can put multiple collections into. So in this case, I will call the collection set Arctic. I don't want to put it inside another collection set, so I'll choose Create. Here in the Collections panel, we see our collection set, but there's nothing inside of it. In order to create a collection, we can either select our images first, or we can make the collection. Let's start by just selecting these images here. Then I'll click on the plus icon and choose to create collection. I'll name this ice, and I want to put it inside the collection set Arctic. Since I went to the trouble to select the photos, I'll include those, and I'm going to set it as my target collection. When I set it as my target collection, you'll notice that the plus icon will be removed from the quick collection, and instead it will be added to this ice collection. We'll go ahead and create it. We can see the plus icon, and that means that I can use the B key in order to add images quickly to this collection. So let's return to the Arctic folder. I'll scroll down a bit and select a few more images and then tap the B key to add them to the ice collection. Again, collections are all virtual. They're just pointers to the originals. So I haven't moved any of the files on the hard drive and I haven't had to duplicate them to take up more space. Just like in Quick Collection, if we go to this collection and I decide I don't want an image to be included, I can select it and tap the Delete key. All right, let's move to another folder. I'll go to Greenland, and if I want to add these first two images, again, I'll just tap the B key. So a collection can contain images from multiple folders in the hard drive. All right, let's create another collection. I'll click on the plus icon and choose Create Collection, and this one I'll name Greenland. I wanna put it inside that same collection set Let's include these images and set it as the target collection. Then I'll return to the Greenland folder, select some additional images, and tap the B key to add them to that collection. Now, if I have a lot of images that I want to go through, I can simplify this process even more. I'll select the Painter tool from the toolbar, and I'll set it to the target collection. Now I can scroll down through my images and when I click with the Painter tool, that image will automatically be added to the collection. So instead of having to select the image and then tap the B key, I can just paint with the Painter tool. 
If I want to add more than one image, I can click and drag to add additional images. If I add an image and then I want to remove it, I can hold down the Option key on Mac or the Alt key on Windows and the Painter tool icon switches to the eraser and I can click to remove it from the collection. Let's take a look at the Greenland collection and you'll notice that images that are in more than one collection have the collection icon. I'll put back the Painter tool and then click on this badge on the thumbnail and we can see that the same image is in more than one collection. I can choose the other collection in order to switch to that collection. And if I right click and choose go to folder in library, well here you'll notice that all of the images that are in a collection have that same badge icon even if they're only in one collection but it's a great shortcut to quickly move from a folder to a collection. Now, if we make a change to an image, for example, I'll tap the eight key in order to give this image a green label. And I'll also use quick develop, which we haven't talked about yet, but I can quickly add presets to my images to change their look. I'll select black and white, and then choose black and white landscape to make sure that we can see that I've made a change. When I move to the other collection, we'll notice that the change that we made to the image has been updated throughout all of our collections. And it's also been changed in the original folder. If we wanted one image to be processed differently than the other in another collection, then we'd need to make a virtual copy, which will be covered in more detail later in this series. One of the nice things about collections is that it's very easy to change the sort order. If I select an image and drag and drop it, we can change the sequence and tell our story in any manner that we'd like. Returning to our quick collection, if we decide that we want to save this, we can right click or command click on Mac and choose to save our quick collection. I'll call this day one, and we have the option to clear the quick collection after saving. We can see day one has been added to our collections panel, but not within the Arctic collection set. So I'll select it and drag and drop it into that collection set. If I wanted to duplicate a collection, I can right click and then choose to duplicate collection. Or if I wanted to delete a collection, I could right click and choose to delete it. Now we only have a few collections here, but as we create more and more collections, we can quickly filter our collections by typing in the search bar. So if I type in ice, for example, then we'll only see the ice collection and the parent folder. I'll remove the search criteria and we can also color label our folders. I'll right click, add a color label and choose green. Then to filter, on our color labels, I can click the magnifying glass, choose color labels, and then select green. All right, I'll change that back to all so that we can see all of our collections. Finally, if I want to rename a collection, I can right click on it. And you'll notice I don't have to select the collection that I wanna rename, just right click and choose rename. Lightroom Classic knew where my cursor was and that I wanted to rename the collection day one and I'll just call it plants and animals. Excellent, as you can see, collections are an incredibly powerful way to organize our photographs into projects. I'm Julianne Cost, thanks for watching.